Hello and welcome to Alina High School and Division II Boys Soccer District Final. Between Shawnee and St. Mary's Garrett Mansfield alongside Nate Garlock. Thank you for being with us here this evening. As Nate, we get a look at two of the top teams in the Western Buckeye League. They've survived to this round of the tournament. And it gets even better when you have two teams that are familiar with each other in a high stakes game and a birth to regionals on the line. Yeah, you know, if there isn't enough at stake already with a birth to the regionals on the line, when you get a game like this with so many backstories, you know, you talk about the seniors um, on this Shawnee Indian team, 36-0 and in conference play. Obviously, you've seen St. Mary's quite a bit. St. Mary's on the other side. You know, this has been a big rivalry over the years. You know that even though maybe they didn't have the success at conference play they would have liked, nothing would be sweeter than a win in tournament play to move on to the regionals. You know, when these two teams get together, it's very physical. They get after one another, and I expect the same tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You will see early on how things get moving. It, even in the early minutes, could dictate how the rest of this one goes. Nate, you mentioned the undefeated mark for Shawnee, 9-0 in the WBL this year, 16-1-1 overall. That lone loss came against Oakwood. And for St. Mary's, they entered tonight's game with a 16-3-1 mark. They were 7-2 in the WBL, finished in third in the conference standings. It was a 5-0 victory for Shawnee when they met into the regular season. That was back at the end of September, over a month ago now, as they meet in the district title. We'll march you through the tournament run as they make their way here, but first let's meet the players on the field. First for St. Mary's, they're wearing the white kits with the, the blue shorts as we see them here right now. In goal, way off to our, uh, way off to our right, gonna be Caden Balwig, Cody Burt wears number one, Quinn Holtzampel wears number two for St. Mary's, Easton Kraft wears number three, number four is A.J. Daringer, Jack Hurtenstein is number five, Vincent Holtzampel number seven, Wyatt Chapman number 11, number 13 is Braden Keller, Reese Triple is number 26, 27 is Connor Ross. There's the starters for St. Mary's. There as Holtzampel knocks one near side beyond the boundary, forcing a throw in for Shawnee. Let's meet the Tribe tonight, their keeper, number one, way off to our left, Jack Tenwaldi is, this one is sent into the box and held on by Balwig. To try there for Alex McGuire for Shawnee. He wears number six, Luca Facillo's number five. Number seven is Matteo Facillo for Shawnee. Sam Tenwaldi's number eight, Noah Scheid, number nine. Number 10 is Colin Scheid. Austin Miller wears number 11. Rest of the starters for Shawnee, number 14, Noah Neth. Ethan Parlapiano's number 22, and Caleb Miller wears number 40. Head coaches, Josh Hurtenstein, respectively, for St. Mary's, and going to be Ryan Quatman for the Shawnee Indians. There's your starters here tonight. A uh, couple of minutes into the contest early on. And uh, one try already on goal for Shawnee. And see a team that likes to play the ball at their feet a lot, Nate, and that's ball control early is something we can sense trying to keep away from St. Mary's. Yeah, absolutely. One of the keys of the game is being able to possess the ball. St. Mary, or excuse me, Shawnee, very good at that. Uh, wanting to hold on to the ball, lots of possession time, trying to work it around and see if they can't find some openings. As you're going to see tonight, that you saw kind of on that first opportunity, they're going to try to do a lot of crosses as you saw that ball get sent into the middle. They have Austin Miller lurking all the time. And, you know, the six foot six, six foot seven senior always kind of lurking, wins a lot of those headers, you know, those 50 50 balls that, you know, should be 50 50. He turns into more like 80 20 as he had an early attempt there to try to split the defense. Uh, you, Shawnee Lowe likes to put that pressure on, and I think we're going to see that a lot tonight as they continue to, to possess this ball uh, for quite a while here in the early going. Connor Ross might have saved it, a goal or at least a shot on goal for St. Mary's on the, de the defensive side. And a nice take away from Mateo Facilla, but a whistle called against St. Mary's. That'll set up free kick for the Indians. They'll be taking it right away. Colin Scheid sends it to the right. And now Luca Facillo looking for some space. He's going to go down at near goal line, but Cotter Russ wrestles it back away from him again. Two good defensive plays for the man wearing 27 for the Rough Riders. It's good hustle by Russ on that time. Luca Facillo, he has a lot of speed. He's able to get around defenders and cause some issues. That time, Russ, nice job on the defensive side, getting the ball away and kicking it away to try to let his defense get reset. Throw in and a header out. We'll keep it with St. Mary's along that far side. This district title setup 
First time in a handful of years these, these two have seen each other in this round of the postseason. Actually, I should take that back because last year was the district championship right here. Shawnee went to the regional championship and fell to Lexington. That's going to go off. Ross going to go down below goal line, set up a corner kick for Shawnee. Alex McGuire on the try on offense. And they'll send Luca Facillo down at near this near this flag. First corner of the night for either side. Yeah, Shawnee loves these corner kicks. So we've talked about Austin Miller here in the early going. This is where he shines as he stands above. Most defenders able to get in the box. Shawnee's looking to try to send one in early. That's going to get knocked out. Tried to go for Noah Neff. Kind of body that through the pipes, but well defended. As Wyatt Chapman tries to play keep away, lost it. Was the last to touch it, giving it back to Shawnee as Parlo Piano tosses it back onto the pitch. A shied pass from Collin to Noah. Not that far side. It's going to sneak out. Sam Tenwaldi, the closest to that for Shawnee. When you look at the four WBL titles in a row for Shawnee, and it doesn't stop there. They, they are going for a four-peat in district championships. Last year, a win over St. Mary's, Salina the year before, and then Kenton in 2019. They find Miller here atop the box, looking to turn his way towards the goal. Disrupted by Cody Burt, and a whistle called. Looking like a slight advantage for Miller, going to change possession. A little bit of a push off that time by Austin Miller. As he was fighting for the ball with Cody Burt, working on that position. And I think that was more of a, just a, an opportunity where Austin Miller thought maybe he was going to go down, just kind of grabbed a hold of Burt to balance himself. But it was enough of a push off to get the ball back to St. Mary's. A free kick from Quinn Holtzapple nearly flips the field, but not for long. Shawnee rips that ball back and looks to head their way. Colin Scheid along that far side, loses it. And dumped on down by St. Mary's. Back to Jack Tenwaldi in goal. Already seen his big leg on display early on. As much as he's able to help out the offensive attack for Shawnee, letting them crash towards the goal. Luca Facillo battling with a couple of rough riders. Sends it in with the throw. Out to Mateo, the reigning WBL Player of the Year in the Boys soccer, and that title's been handed off to his teammate, Austin Miller, thanks to his 34 goals so far this year. It's a remarkable season. and there have been a lot of games where they lean really heavy on Austin Miller, including that district semifinal where they won 2 nothing. Austin Miller with both goals in that game. And, you know, that's just what a player of that talent can do when he can take over a mm -hmm. game and he can be the offense. Everybody else around him just you know, trying to help facilitate that, let him have some space to work. It's pretty amazing when you graduate the program's all-time leading scorer, and then all of a sudden somebody like that, somebody like Austin Miller, quickly fills the void as he has done this year. Nice pass inside for Luca Facillo, looking for an angle, didn't have it at first, tried to level this one back up, but it's cleared away by A.J. Deringer. Tremendous footwork, almost set that up single-handedly, but. And Shawnee showing all the skills here. I think that time Shawnee got caught looking a little bit as Luca Facillo was able to get between the defenders. Looked like he's going to have a good opportunity. And it looked like the rest of the offense kind of stopped thinking that he was going to take that shot. When he decided to put it back to the middle, nobody was there for it. And a lucky break for St. Mary's. Mateo finds Austin Miller. And that's taken away by St. Mary's. Good defensive play here for St. Mary's with, with as often as they have been held with their backs up against their own goal early in this contest. Well, we're seeing right now Shawnee just completely controlling the midfield, not letting that ball get back um, too often, been able to get it back up to the front anytime St. Mary's has tried to get it back into their own offensive side. Here's Caleb Miller with some tempo going from his defensive back position and gave it up for Alex McGuire, lost it for a moment. McGuire, uh, Miller helps them recover. And now Luca Facillo fires one in, up and high. And the official did call. The keeper, Ballwig, got a finger on it. That'll set up a corner for Shawnee, if that indeed is the call. And they are sending it out to the left of the goal. 
Nice Where, try that time by St. Mary's. They just couldn't see if they couldn't get the, the goal kick in quickly before anybody stopped them, but the official was on it as the keeper was able to get just his fingertip on it to send it out. The second corner of this contest. Luke and Facillo in off a header, not once but twice. Alex McGuire and Austin Miller leaks back. Parla Piano plays it forward. And Wyatt Chapman will boot it downfield. Allow that St. Mary's defense to sort of let the air out and, and grab a breath as Shawnee's back end has to advance now. First 10 minutes have gone by that tournament trail for both of these teams. We look at Shawnee with wins over Bryan of 10 to nothing and Salina 2-0. Meanwhile, St. Mary's the three seed of the district. Got a first round of win over Van Wert, 13-0, 5-1 over Elida. And here they are, 1-0 over Kenton. That was a hard fought game in the semis. And looking down, I believe that is a game that St. Mary's lost at home, so they avenge a regular season defeat to get to this point. Good fight for the ball that time by Luca. As, uh, Shawnee is able to maintain possession. A little touch pass for Mateo Facillo, but got it right back. Sends it to the left for Noah Scheid. Gets to the top corner of the box, gets by one defender, centers up a pass for Alex McGuire, fires it, knocked down by Balwig, and we stay scoreless. Good save by Balwig that time. As Saw they were able to get that ball in, into the box, and he had some time to set that up and let it go. But ball would right on the spot to get that save. Vincent Holtz Apple chasing this one down for St. Mary's. He'll turn it upfield off to our left. Centering pass for a moment for A.J. Derringer, trying to get through the teeth of the Shawnee defense, but not for long. Taken away by Colin Scheid. And that'll go off of St. Mary's back to Shawnee to throw it in on that far chalk line. Scoreless contest down on the Kogi Plumbing and Heating and AC scoreboard. Name you know and name you trust. Good luck to the Rough Riders. Mary's number 16, Brady Triplett. See Brady Triplett enter for St. Mary's giving away Wyatt Chapman. First change in the lineups today. And a daring her throw back in. To the top of the box, he finds Vincent Holt sample, try to turn and send it on. And this one leaks on by Jack Tenwaldy and a score for St. Mary's. First real opportunity the Rough Riders have had as they get a clean shot on goal. Not quite sure what happened with the Indians that time. It almost looked like maybe they weren't quite set. The ball gets out to that outside. Nice job as they had Tenwaldy leaning to get that slow roller to go. Just was able to sneak it on past. Had a one nothing lead for St. Mary's. And that's obviously every goal is big, but for the Rough Riders, you gotta think that's gonna give them a little bit of boost. Obviously with the opportunities or uh, lack of that they've had against this Indian squad earlier this year, this year losing four nothing. You know, to come out here in the early going and put one in to go on top. Big momentum swing for St. Mary's. Uh, comes here with 27 of 51 left in the first. And now Shawnee in a kind of an unfamiliar position. They've been aggressive. They've had more opportunities, but yeah, Nate, you hit it right there. That really that first one. Kind of formulated and fell together and take advantage of the opportunities you have. We'll see if maybe that gives Shawnee a little sense of urgency here, wanting to get this one back, get this one back to even, as we still have 27 minutes left to go here in the first half. That is the first goal given up for Shawnee since the end of September. It's been over a month when they went to Cincinnati to play Marie Mount. And one five to one. Shutouts over Van Wert, OG, Kenton, Bluffton, Alida, Ontario, Brian, and Salina. 
giving way to the game's first goal here today. This one's going to get cleared out. And they were going to credit Brady Triplett to that score. He came right into the game, found an opportune moment, and knocked it in there for St. Mary's. Now St. Mary's with another opportunity here, coming off the free kick. And Old Sample sends it down, and it's going to miss off to the left of net. Our right, give it back to Shawnee. For the scoring tallies on the, the campaign, Shawnee now 85-4 and 11 against, while St. Mary stands 88-4 and 21 allowed. They're playing forward in their third of the field with the one nothing advantage. Goes down to Vincent Holtzapple. He loses the handle. Kind of a misreceive on that pass in. So you mentioned that the uh, that that goal that time credited to Brady Triplett. What a time for your first goal of the season. Yeah, if indeed my eyes are not deceiving me, that'd be a heck of a time. But there was a couple of bodies in the vicinity. And we hit the 25, near the 25 minute mark. Luca Vasillo, about 20 yards out, looking for some space. Almost splits three defenders before losing it. Now they headed forward for St. Mary's. Nice turn by Easton Kraft, trying to sneak away, but not for long. Couldn't get it past his Past the other half of the field, past midfield. Here's the good attack for Alex McGuire through one, through two. Now he's going to cross this one up, but too strong. Yeah, that's what Shawnee wants to do. Coach Qualman talked about it leading into this game. They want to get lots of crosses, try to send lots of lots of balls into that box to see if they can't get something coming off. That time just a little bit too much by McGuire. Okay, with Miller was a play it back for for Shawnee to Parla Piano. He'll go back to ten Wally. Let everybody kind of get positioned and really decompress the formation. From midfield. There goes McGuire. Couldn't find Mateo Facillo. St. Mary's takes advantage there. Still looking for things here in the middle. Mateo Facillo in some space. For McGuire. Now to Miller. And St. Mary's trying to wrestle that away. It's A.J. Daringer, the nearest there. And Quinn Holtample steps in front and sends it on downfield. See, once again, trying to see if they couldn't get Austin Miller loose to get something going towards the net. That one gets poked away, but Shawnee doing a great job of continuing to control the midfield not letting the ball get too far behind their defense. Gonna be chopped out. Here's Caleb Miller. Gives it up to Colin Scheid and ahead for Miller. They are gonna find him here. And looking to create some space. St. Mary's crowd wants a foul there. That big frame of Miller trying to create some extra room. And Mateo Facillo just drops this one in. Luca can get there first, but it's ball to cover up the rolling sphere right to him. You know, I think here in the early going, you're just seeing some things that you're not used to seeing out of the Indians. Oh, okay, some mental mistakes. You know, that time, Luca Facillo not following on the end as Mateo thought he was going to continue to go. If Luca continues to run, that is a perfect look at the goal that time. Just another missed opportunity by the Indians. Now, one thing they may not have to really stress about is, is having a, those opportunities continue as this ball gets behind one defender and then finally cleared away. And it's Tenwaldi with a line drive redirect. And I'll send it out to Noah Scheid. And he's going to lose it outside of the boundary. And some changes going to be 
marching in for St. Mary's. Yeah, Will Minker and Aiden Jeffries now on 23 and 29 for the Rough Riders. Almost halfway through this opening half. And a surprise goal for St. Mary's formulated out of a broken play in front of net. Squeaked its way past Jack Tedwaldy, and that's where we stand. one nothing Rough Riders. Shawnee content to play this ball back to their keeper. And Tenwaldi sends it upfield. Here goes Vincent holds Apple a pass. Looking for Easton Kraft. Knocked out by Miller. St. Mary's that time had numbers. They would have moved a little bit quicker, but Shawnee able to recover as St. Mary's tries to reset. To the middle of the field for Cody Burns. Up ahead for Holtz Apple and a nice pry away for Noah Neff. Dangerous challenge that time by Neff. If timed it right, was able to get it away. If he'd been a little late, he had left his, uh, you know, the player he was defending wide open would have been a nice pass, a good look at goal. But Neff does a nice job timing it right, getting in there. And now here comes Shawnee on offense. And just sent out wisely at far end for St. Mary's. Play this back to Scheid. And he's going to pop this one up. And uh, Miller wasn't able to get around his defenders to maybe try to put that on frame. So it sneaks past goal line and a free kick for St. Mary's. And Quinn Holtz Apple will do the honors. Easton Kraft trying to chase this down, but not before. Shawnee is able to get there. A lot of action already. For the first half of the play off to our right with Shawnee playing in their attack third. There we see Facillo. And a good step in front for St. Mary's. All that pass was Brady Triplets. And cleared upfield. Now the foot race is on. Caleb Miller got there first for Shawnee. Ahead for Luca Facillo. Looking to go to work. Three defenders in his way. Looking for some space, so he gives it up. Outside for Sam Tenwaldi. Off to the left of the box. Trying to go towards that goal line. Nice sliding tackle out there for Reese Triplets. And extinguishes the attack for the Rough Riders on defense. The one thing you can definitely see right now, Nate, is a lot of scurrying, a lot of hustle and activity for St. Mary's defensively. And it's been there since the get-go. Yeah, absolutely. But they've had to defend a lot tonight. And we've seen three substitutions already trying to keep fresh legs in there. But they're doing a nice job, you know, kind of that bend but not breaking type of defense. And, you know, it's led to some openings offensively, even though they haven't had a lot. You know, able to capitalize to get that first goal. As you see, Shawnee just continue to control this ball, but not with too many good looks here so far. They've got all 11 on their side of the field. Sent into the corner for Miller. Miller gets there. Can he turn the corner? And there's a lot of trouble there, cut off by three defenders plus keeper. No angle back there for Austin Miller. Here's Caleb Miller playing it back. Gives it up to Colin Scheid. Goes out for Luca Facillo on the left. And a good stop again, A.J. Derringer. Gets in the way for St. Mary's, but not for long. Now Luca going for goal line. And see who touched it last. Half of St. Mary's calling it their way, but it looks like they were the last to get a foot on that. But Luca Facillo trying to turn the corner and maybe set up a teammate, but he'll go to the, the corner, set up a teammate that way. Third corner kick of the night for the Indians. The first two, not too many looks coming out of it. See if they get a better opportunity here. And Facillo's corner in the air. Miller got a head on it, but it's over top of the crossbar and out. It was a nice cross as he was able to get it in there. Did a nice job of judging the distance. Was able to uh, get a couple of his teammates' opportunities, but just couldn't quite finish. Field for St. Mary's, number 
Jeff St. Mary's performing the goal kick. So we get down below 17 to go in this opening, opening half of play. So the 27-51 mark where the Riders took the first score of the game. And Brady Triplett trying to track down that ball. Shawnee doing their best keep away though. This ball's gonna get outside for, I believe that's Coda Miller. Yeah, Coda Miller just checking into the game. Coda Miller, young player, but lots of speed. The Indians obviously you know, like being able to have somebody on the field that can cover a lot of ground quickly, hoping maybe can lead to some opportunities. You look up and down the Shawnee roster, should come as no surprise, really balanced youth and experience. And a lot of high leverage games like we're seeing right now is everything St. Mary's is able to do on defense. They have not been able to really put a solid possession game together just yet, but they haven't needed to. Putting all the pressure right now on Shawnee, and right now their defense has been their best offense, especially with a lead. There's still 15 minutes left to go here in the first half, and you, you just have to feel like one of these times, it's, you, you wonder how long that this St. Mary's uh, defense can hold and keep Shawnee from having you know good looks. Seen Shawnee miss a couple of opportunities, but for the most part, the Rough Rider defense has stood tall. The way the the flow of the game is, is going, the way you see Shawnee getting those uh, those chances forward, and the way they possess the ball, you you have to question is one enough it, against this team. It's hard to even imagine it being so, but we've seen a lot over the last many years. But the way the intensity is, the intensity, the momentum, definitely feels uh, like it is with St. Mary's at the moment. They're excited. Seems like every time there's a defensive play, not only the bench, but the crowd getting into it. And that's, that fuels the team. Yeah, St. Mary's didn't shy away. They, you know, they obviously knew what they were up against tonight. You know, going through this week, you know, with the hashtag revenge week, you know, they, they want this game. They want this victory. And... You know, you had to know Shawnee knew that, so they were preparing for a fight tonight. St. Mary's has been up for the test. Yeah, that's what happens when you go through a a tournament trail that has nothing but conference teams littered, and I'm pretty sure m most of the WBL, and it, I forget the the exception every single year, but it's like teams like Bryan that get thrown into this district, and uh, they have to deal with the the WBL Upper Sandusky. But other than that, pretty much works its way out. Napoleon, another one overlooking, but usually it turns out to be a WBL de facto tournament, and this is the ones you'd rather have as much as the regular season crown is meaningful, too. Here's Austin Miller for Shawnee. You can see St. Mary's, see their strategy, always two players on Austin Miller. If Shawnee's going to score, you know, St. Mary's is saying that's fine, but somebody else is going to score. Somebody else is going to have to beat us. We're not going to let Austin Miller do it. Sometimes that strategy works. Sometimes it doesn't when we see. But here in the early going, St. Mary's doing a nice job of blanketing him and not letting him get free. Caleb Miller doing his best defense for Shawnee. Parla Piano ahead for Mateo Facillo. Caleb Miller, just a sophomore, has had a tremendous year on the defensive side of things. Has done a great job. You know, they like to keep him free on that back side and just be able to run and challenge. And you know, when he hasn't had to mark anybody up, he's really been able to, to cause some problems on the defensive side of things. Got a foul just north of the box. Sam Tenwaldi trying to get in there for position. They're gonna call a foul against St. Mary's. Very, very close from being inside that penalty box. But nonetheless, with this being, you know, 16, 17 yards out. This is a big, big play. Caleb Miller will do the free kick. They gotta move some St. Mary's players to be in the, the rightful distance away from this free kick. As they build that wall. Ten Waldy and Miller down up in front of the net. And Caleb Miller sends it right on through. Top shelf and to the right. 
Caleb Miller does it himself. Fires it on in with 11.58 to go in the half. Caleb Miller, we were just talking about all the great things that he does defensively. Steps up only one goal on the season, three assists. Doesn't spend a lot of time on the offensive end, but like most players, um, soccer players in this area and through the state and through the country anymore, you know, quality, quality time on club teams, lots of time on offense. He is not new to scoring goals, and he just showed you why right there. Big time score to equalize the game. We'll take our first time out, 11.58 of the first half on WOSN. Tied up at one goal apiece, late stages of the first half. And a quick handball rolled. And a Shawnee gives it right back to St. Mary's. St. Mary's scored about 12 minutes into the game, 13th minute officially. And a, somewhat of a, a broken play, but nonetheless, they all count the same. But off of a free kick, Caleb Miller fires through. A rocket for Shawnee to tie the game at one, and now St. Mary's looking to respond. 1-1 one, one even score, Noah Neth with a steal. And this is back to Braden Keller in the middle. And Sam Tenwaldi, and him going at it. Tenwaldi keeps it in the possession for Shawnee, and Neth just boots it down the field in the direction of, Kayla, or of Austin Miller. What a strong play by Sam Tenwaldi right there. Mixed it up, three different St. Mary's players was able to maintain that possession, not turn it over. Great play by the senior. <laughs> Colin Scheid with the pass back to Caleb Miller and he even will surrender the Jack Tenwaldi. And the Shawnee keeper. And not a whole lot of open space, a long pass trying to get it into the reaches of Austin Miller. And a Mecker pass goes wide for St. Mary's. Lose it out of bounds. Throw back in for St. Mary's, but first they'll make a change. Caleb Miller that time just trying to send it back up, trying to see if he can get the offense moving forward to send it down that right channel, but a little bit too far out wide, ends up out of bounds. But you're seeing that the Indian team continuing to put the pressure on, wanting to force things, you know, not slowing down. They finally feel like they're starting to get a little bit of a rhythm here. Fighting for possession midfield. And Neth, it's wrapped up with Jack Hurtenstein. Caleb Miller wins the ball. He's going to use that sideline at has an extra guard. Over to Colin Scheid. He gives it up to Noah. Go Sam, go Sam, one. And a wide pass looking for Miller. Oh. And heavy contact in front. Brady triplets and Caleb Miller get together and it's one of those not even Letting the other player get close to the ball to keep the possession, but still results in a foul. You saw on that play, you can hear the St. Mary's fans. It ends up being a, a penalty on Caleb Miller. Ball's going to go back to St. Mary's as that time. Uh, it was Brady Triplett trying to fight for it. So Quinn Holtzapple with the free kick and is able to put it up in the box. Shawnee aggressively trying to get that ball out. Not completely clear from the woods just yet. Now they are. And St. Mary's. Good job, Braden Keller plays it up ahead. See who can win this ball here. Easton Kraft wrestles it away from Noah Neff. Kraft, good job with the ball at his feet. And then Noah Shai just steps up and extinguishes the threat. It looked like Kraft was going to have an opportunity there if he could turn that corner, but great job by Neff keeping him from squaring up. And St. Mary's able to maintain the balls. They're going to try to come back on offense. About as much as we've seen them possess at one point in time. 
Ratcheting up the intensity now in a renewed score 1-1. Down to about the last eight minutes of the first half. Division two, district championship. Winner of this one goes on to see either Lexington or Ontario. That'll be a five o'clock game next week. On, uh, that is Wednesday over at Lima Senior. F one more time in a great fight with Hurstein. It's able to battle that one off. St. Mary's though continuing to keep this ball on their offensive side of the field. Looking for Crafts. Got a room there. Just to the left of the box, one on one with Neff. Deflection, but he still has some positioning. Goes to cross it up, nobody home on the back end. Triplet the closest. And right now Shawnee with all the numbers they're able to have a couple of free defenders able to get to that ball quickly. Shine with a long pass up that far left sideline to Miller. He's taking his time and gets tripped up right in front of the St. Mary's bench. A foul called on St. Mary's. You can see the physicality ramping up for both teams as this first half is coming to a close. Yeah. Just under seven minutes left to go. That time, Shawnee, the beneficiary, is they're going to get the ball back on their offensive side of the field. Here's Alex McGuire. Pass for Sam Tenwaldi. Trying to get around his defender, Aiden Jeffries. And Jeffries holds the advance for a moment. Back to McGuire. Looking to take off for the Indians. Nice moves up the top, and Miller looking for the deflection in. Surrounded by three white shirts, and still not relenting. One verse three, and Austin Miller's coming away victorious. This one's going to go out of bounds and stay with the Indians. How about it? And a sum for Shawnee quickly. Shawnee, number 28, Tate Bender. Yeah, Tate Bender entering, sophomore. Tate Bender, another one of those talented sophomores on this Indian team. You, know, you talked about what the senior class has been able to accomplish, undefeated in WBL play, four straight titles, all the postseason accolades, but the cupboard's not bare. They have a lot of young, talented players on this team. That one's thrown really right into the hands of Caden Balwig, the keeper with St. Mary's. Punt, punt right downfield. See if they get one of the bounces, but Parla Piano disrupts the advance for a moment. Noah Shine and A.J. Deeringer back and forth. Deeringer mixing it up with Shine on that possession, ends up going out of bounds. Shawnee going to try to move quickly. And Tenwaldi couldn't quite connect on that long pass. Loses it up the sideline. Throw into Daringer as Mateo Facillo wrestles it away. Go to Bender in the middle, and he wanted Miller. Couldn't quite get that touch pass linked up. Back out to the left for Tenwaldi. Cross inside for Miller. Point blank range off the post. That's what you wanted. Miller, that's about as good of an opportunity as he's going to have today, you feel. And goes right in. To the pole. Those are the ones you go home and think about for a very long, long time. As they finally were able to get Austin Miller on a cross. He actually had enough time to work the ball and get it kind of set. Looked like he had the shot he wanted, but too far to the left. That one bounces off the pole, but they're going to look for another opportunity. And played out just north of the flag for Braden Keller. I keep Shawnee off of a corner kick. With as much traffic as Miller's had to fight through today, you almost wonder, like maybe there's that slight hesitation and well, making you, sure he had a good good foot on it. And like we said, I mean, they're not making it easy for Austin, as Austin has had two or three players on him every time he's touched the ball. St. Mary's has you know, obviously come out with a very strong game plan. They've seen Austin quite a lot over the last four years. You know, they decided that 
we're not, you know, if he's going to score, he's going to have to work for it, and they're going to try to have somebody else do it. Caleb Miller stepped up, was able to put one in the back of the net. We'll see if anybody else is able to help out as well. Final three minutes of the half. And we're kind of back to where we began, about a goal each. But it's still square, still all tied. <clears throat> and Shawnee will play it back. Caleb Miller, he has the lone goal of the day for the Indians. There goes Luke and Facillo. Gives way to Alex McGuire, then Sam Tenwaldi. Tenwaldi has some space, gets through a couple defenders. He's got an angle, fires it on goal, and just batted down by Ballwig. The ricochet out of harm's way. Shawnee will pick this one up, throw it back in, and do it again. Ballwig with a nice deflection that time. Looked like Austin Miller might have had an opportunity off of the rebound. But goes a little bit wide. But the throw in's going to come in as he gets a header. It's going to lead to a goal kick. And a nice, nice attack for Sam Tenwald. He got around a couple of defenders, got a good ball in front of him, chased it down. St. Mary's keeper booms this one. Yeah, both keepers, really good legs. They can really clear a ball out in a hurry and force the defenses to retreat and Turn it on. Way out wide for Luca Vasillo. Wasn't able to get there in time before St. Mary's just bumps it out. Content to let them throw this next one in. Over to from Mateo to Luca Vasillo. Sends this one into the box and header try for Miller held on by Ballway. Another save for the St. Mary's. Keeper, the junior, keeps this a 1-1 game. Another great cross by the Indians as Luca Facillo is able to get that one into great depth. Nice attempt by Austin Miller, but nice save by the keeper. One minute remaining in the first half. One minute remaining. Back to Caleb Miller. Trying to get away from Triplett. That's what they decided to do in this last minute. And Luca Facillo tried to knock that down, but lost it. And St. Mary's last touch it out of bounds. Middle of the field for Matteo Facillo. Little give and go. Now Shawnee's gonna try again, and we got look like a little little bit of a touch. But that should Nine. all be really Nine. wipe out Eight. the rest of this first half, Nate. Seven. But we had a Six. score from Five. each end. Four. We got 40 more minutes Three. to decide who moves Two. on. That's going to be an excellent Three. second half. 1-1 one, one tie going into the locker room, the coming out. Half, second half of the trip tried. to the one, regional semifinal on the line. Looking forward to it. I wouldn't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. Second half coming your way next on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsored by Hoagie Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. You know the name, a name you can trust. Good luck to the Rough Riders. Through the first 40 minutes, we stand at Rough Riders 1 and Shawnee 1. A goal at 27.51 for St. Mary's. 11.58 was what was left on the scoreboard when Shawnee found theirs. Now we have 40 minutes left to decide. Garrett Mansfield alongside Nate Garlock and Nate, after that first half, we, we flip signs and we'll see what kind of momentum is sparked early in this half to try to break this tie. And it looks like Austin Miller fires one in across and Luca Facillo trying to head that through, but it's deflected out. You know, I was going to say, you, know, you wonder what kind of adjustments each team had made in the locker room coming out here as we sit at a 1-1 one -one tie and right out of the gate. You know, Austin Miller coming out of the middle, working down that right channel, was able to get a good crosser. Usually those crosses come into him. That time he was delivering and almost led to a goal. So you see another one go into the middle. That one gets denied as well. They Shawnee played the first half with the ball at their feet a lot. That is very much their style of play. A lot of possession. 
really a testament not just to what their offense is able to do, but also the defense. Now allowing a team to get settled in on their offensive third. And we see it again. Uh, this is just an example of it right here once more as this one is poked down below the goal line by St. Mary's and forcing a corner kick for Shawnee. You know, it almost looks as you know, obviously you know, Austin Miller the most dangerous in the middle of the field in front of the net, but it looks like if St. Mary's is going to continue with the double and triple teams, Shawnee is okay with putting him on out on that outside, trying to see if he can't facilitate some goals, but I'm sure on this corner kick we're going to see him in the mix. And that's the direction they went, but it's going to be headed out a couple of times by St. Mary's. Saw some celebration from the Indians, like maybe they thought that had crossed the goal line that time, but officials say no, so it took them a second to reset. They're going to put the pressure on it once again. That was really, really close to the cage, and St. Mary's breathe a sigh of relief, saying they got that thing out. Knocked away by Shawnee, though. Or actually, it'll be by St. Mary, so Shawnee will have back. And Vreese Triplett playing the defense down near Austin Miller. And Triplett sends this one out. And Shawnee continues to compact things. Heading their direction. Off to the left here. And a whistle comes out. Jack Hurdenstein and Luca Vasillo lock legs. So foul called. And they matched up again right there. Luca strong with the left foot. Off wide to the left. It's going to go with just a touch high. And now Shawnee will fall back. Up ahead from A.J. Derringer in the direction of Easton Kraft. And see if he can get around those three Shawnee defenders. He shields the ball for a moment, but it's picked away. Now Easton trying to run it down from Colin Scheid. St. Mary's couldn't quite keep it ahead for much longer. Cody Burt steals it from a Miller. And well down the sideline. And we have... A Shawnee with a man down here briefly. Looks like maybe Caleb Miller. Looks like he's holding his head back. So, you know, maybe in that scrum down there, maybe it took a little bit of a bump to the nose, to the lip. Some bleeding going on as they're going to have to get him to come off. And that's a that's a big blow if he's going to have to come off. And it looks like they're going to try to see if they can't keep him on. But if they uh, they lose him back on that defensive end, even for a little bit, you know, that's definitely a, a hole that St. Mary's is the one to try to take advantage of. Tate Bender comes up off the bench. We'll continue on with St. Mary's to throw this in. They knock it a couple of additional seconds on the second half clock. 1-1 one, one is our score. And we are ready back for play. Shawnee and St. Mary's back at it for the second year in a row in this district championship in Division II boys soccer. Winner gets Lexington or Ontario, as we mentioned earlier, and during our halftime break. Real-time look, that game was scoreless. And it seems like every year you see the Lexington and Shawnee programs a lot of times looking forward to each other in the regionals as they did a couple of years here recently. Nice steal that time by the Rough Riders, but Shawnee able to get it right back. Alex McGuire able to get the ball moving forward. There goes McGuire again. Deflected, uh, that might have gone off of St. Mary's, and it did, a quarter kick for the Indians. This will get the, most of the Shawnee offense headed forward. Caleb Miller returns, good sign for the Indians. So this is gonna be the fifth or sixth corner kick for the Indians, they haven't been able to cash in yet. As it is the fifth, we get some confirmation up here in the booth, appreciate the help. 
they've come up empty once again, 0 for 5 on corner kicks, where usually that's a that's a big part of their offense. And deflected his shots. But Vasilo sticks with it, tries to cross it up in the in front of Alex McGuire. Knocked away by the Riders. And they're going to give that ball back to Shawnee. Going to go along goal line, looking for a pass, and just booted down off to the left. A little over five minutes have gone by into the second half. And St. Mary's trying to clear that away. Back for Easton, Kraft, and Caleb Miller just toes that beyond the, the painted white line to his left. Luca Facillo doing a lot of work down there, almost mm -hmm. come up with the steal. Very active around that midfield, trying to get the ball back. It is going to go the way of the Indians. Aiden Jeffries had that for St. Mary's. Yeah, the Indians advancing with McGuire. Gives it up to Mateo Facillo. Goes over to Noah Scheid. From left of the box. Trying to curl this around. Going with a longer cross and is able to create a corner kick out of it. You know, that's, that's the second or third time tonight that we've seen, you know, one of the Shawnee attackers able to get around and send a ball into the box, looking for somebody in the middle of the field. But the rest of the offense kind of stopped for a moment, maybe thought that the attacker was going to do something else and missed an opportunity. This time led to a corner, but that one's denied as they're now 0 for 6. Batted down by a ball wig. Sam Tenwaldi the closest there for Shawnee. And the Riders continue to display very tough defense. They've allowed just the one goal, and that was on a free kick for Shawnee. And we have, we have another one coming up for the Indians right here. They're just going to go quick. Luca Facillo, top of the 15. Out to Noah Scheid. And just enough separation there is banged down off the near sideline. Luca did a nice job moving through the defense that time, getting it out to Shy. Just a little bit too much on that pass, though. Noah tried to get it down as the header goes in. Not able to finish it with the Indians. Looks like they're going to call another corner, though, as it goes touched out, touched last and out, of, mm -hmm. out uh, by the Rough Riders. So the Indians, one more opportunity. They're going to go quickly into the box again. Hammer it up over top of the, the frame. You see, sometimes in this game, it just you see so many fortunate bounces or angles, and that was that last header off of Miller, one of those perfectly played in the direction of Sam Tenwaldi. Wasn't able to get in front of it, knock it through, and you know, and you're, for, you're the Rough Riders too. You know, obviously, you know, you want to pull this upset, and you, you're trying to come away with this big victory against a team that has had your number throughout the years. And this is the type of game and game script that lends itself to those upsets. You're, you're seeing Shawnee with opportunities, not able to cash in. You know, St. Mary's playing very good defense, haven't had a lot of opportunities offensively, but when they do, they've had some pretty good looks, able to put one of those in. You know, Shawnee's got to be careful. The longer this game goes, the more confidence St. Mary's will get, and they only need one score. You know, we've hit on that long WBL winning streak over the last four plus years for Shawnee. That means there's a lot of schools that have not beaten the Indians in a long, long time. St. Mary's obviously in the league and on that list. You have to hunt all the way back to 2016 to find the last time the Riders took down the Shawnee program on the soccer field. Nice. A nice pass. Kind of a no look in the direction of Tenwaldi. That time, Austin Miller trying to thread the seam, right, go right through some of the defenses. He once again was going one versus four. Unfortunately, couldn't get it through. It might take a play like that to get things done. 
this point in time. Almost 10 minutes have surpassed in this second half. And we remain locked up at one where we were to start the game. Make that the, to start the half, should say. Start the game, we were even 0-0, obviously. As here, McGuire feeds it to Miller again. He takes a left spin and has a space, but it's knocked down. A.J. Derringer was there for St. Mary's, just happened to be in the line of fire. And out cleared away. Barla Piano ahead off to the right to McGuire. Alex turns up field. And ahead downhill. Looking for some space. Gives it up to Sam Tenwaldi. He goes up high, curls it around, and it's knocked down by Caden Ballwick. Tenwaldi get a nice bend on the ball that time as he was able to kick it through some of the opening, but unfortunately for him, Ballwick right there to come up with the stop. Ballwick with some big, big blocks in net for St. Mary's. He's been attacked, but he stood his ground each and every time. Now five shots on goal, all but one. Been knocked on down. Nice hustle that time from the Rough Rider defender to get to that one, kick it out. Shawnee quickly back in once again, trying to work the middle of the field. Goes Caleb Miller. His shot blocked. And got a whistle down there. That was he was close to the box and the, so they're going to have that be a, a free kick. And indeed they are. That's twice now. They've had very, very close range inside the penalty box, which could have resulted in a penalty kick. But instead, here's a free for Shawnee. And we got a whistle. And they were, went a little early. About the same spot on the field that they scored. Shawnee was able to score from the last time. It looks like Caleb's going to take this free kick and see if maybe he can get his second goal of the night. At Luca Facillo over there as well. It's like he's going to jog away from the ball. And Miller with a long run up in. He's going to go low on the ground, see if he can cause some havoc. And looks like Colin Schein tried to pry it back through. Tenwaldi gives it an, another try, and it's redirected by Balwick. Good defense by the Rough Riders that time. Shawnee had lots of opportunities, put numbers in the box that time, but not able to put it in the net. And a good ball in the middle. Tenwaldi just wasn't ready for it. And you see the back two of the defense for Shawnee, not letting anything creep, creep on back. Jack Tenwaldi, the keeper, playing almost to the midfield circle. And a little trip and a tackle. A.J. Derringer strips the ball out. But St. Mary's can't advance the ball past midfield. Some miscommunication that time. It looked like Colin and Noah Scheid each thought the other was going to go for the ball. This ball's going to get back near Jack Tenwaldi. He sprints up, slides down. Takes away all the opportunity away from Easton Kraft. Jack goes to the left end for Noah Scheid. He takes off, gives it up to Sam Tenwaldi. Back ahead for Scheid and booted out. Brayden Keller got in the way. And Here's Luca Facillo trying to get around A.J. Derringer. Nice. Already full of action again in this second half as the first was. You can expect from a district title game. Here's Mateo Facillo. And Tenwaldi fighting with the ball, fighting for the ball, along with Cody Burtz. And now Shawnee looking to attack. He's right on through, and it's on and in. 
Great move that time to get through the defense. And it's hard to tell right now. Is it is number six? I believe it's going to be Alex McGuire on that goal. Does a great job moving through the defense and putting that one in the net to put the Indians up one. Shawnee with the lead in the second half. We'll take our first second half timeout on WOSN. Scoreboard is sponsored by Cody Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, and name you know, a name you trust. Good luck to the Rough Riders. All I'm at Kogi Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning scoreboard. It reads 2 to 1 with the Shawnee Indians now freshly in the lead for the first time tonight. And it came the tw almost 25 minutes left to go in the game, and Nate entering play. Not sure if anybody would have had St. Mary or uh, Shawnee's first lead of the game being this late. But here it is, 2-1. Yeah, I mean, obviously, St. Mary's a tough team, especially when you're playing somebody that's so familiar with what you do. St. Mary's has done a great great job all night long bottling up Austin Miller. So it's been up to a few other people. We saw Caleb Miller in the first half, and that time Alex McGuire getting the job done. Now the, now the Indians trying to hold on to this lead, trying to deny the Rough Riders and see if they can't get things going back to, towards their offensive side of the field. This free kick will be done by Quinn Holtzapple of St. Mary's. It's going to bend it to the left and head it out defensively by Shawnee. Well defended by the Indians, keeping St. Mary's at bay. I, if I'm not mistaken, that's probably the first, first free kick of that nature up and towards the goal tonight for St. Mary's. They're, they're one score tonight. Came on kind of a, a broken play that they were able to find the ball and take advantage of an early opportunity. They really hadn't possessed the ball much early in the first half of the opening half, but instead found a 1-0 lead. Shawnee found an equalizer right before half. We're trying to politic here for the ball, and looks like Shawnee's going to be rewarded the throw in. See some unhappy St. Mary's fans with that call. They were believing it was last touch by the Indians, but the official says no. Rough Riders touched it, forced it out, so the ball back to Shawnee. Now this game definitely means, definitely has some uh, heavy meaning. A couple of league foes. Second year in a row again in the this round of the tournament. Winner, winner gets the trophy and the district champion medallions. The, the other one will have the, the runner-up versions. And everybody does, I don't, I don't think anybody wants a, a second place one. I don't think that's the uh, the goal here tonight. 22-45 left to go in the contest in St. Mary's. Another free kick here. Mateo Facillo that time just got a little bit too aggressive, trying to fight for the ball. Ended up, I think, made a little bit too high on that kick, caused a free kick, but saw that one go a little bit high over the goalkeeper. But Quinn Holtzapple, the leading scorer for St. Mary's on the year. That was a strong kick, and it wasn't off by much. I don't know if Jack Tenwaldy, how much of a play he would have had to it as he backpedaled back against his own nets. You know, you saw some good fundamentals out of him that time as, you know, he's going back, making sure, hands up. That way, if he ends up in his net or his hands end up at the top of that crossbar and it's over him, he knows it's not going mm -hmm. in on the inside, so doesn't have to jump or make a misplay. And now Shawnee back with some possession for a, for a beat. Right on back to St. Mary's. You see, it's always an interesting time of the game. When you see a, a time game broken, how does that team that falls behind respond? Tells you how you can go really the rest of the way. And so far, St. Mary's, they've really made, played the, with the same intensity. They've matched it all night long and continue to want to play that ball forward. Try to get some more possession here. And ahead to Tenwaldi, but taken away. You know, and really, this is the most that we've seen the Rough Riders control the ball and control possession this entire game. Is, we're going to have a trip, a little bit of frustration that time. It's going to come. 
out of number four, A.J. Daringer that time as he was already on the ground and stuck his foot out to make sure that the Shawnee player couldn't keep playing. Austin Miller once again flanked by pretty much the entire St. Mary's wow. team. And he ends up on the ground. But the Indians continue to play. Knocked out of there by Connor Russ. I think Shawnee would love to find an additional one on this end. Austin Miller header on in and in through. On cue from Austin Miller. Austin Miller, the human cheat code as he is known in the middle that time. Barely has to get up, is able to get over the entire defense as he was flanked once again by multiple defenders by the Rough Riders. Perfect angle that time on that header over the keeper into the back of the net. And just like that, Shawnee up two goals. We'll take another timeout. Shawnee three and St. Mary's one on WOSN. Welcome you back out to Alina, where it's 3-1 Shawnee, thanks to a header off a throw-in by Austin Miller. Lengthy forward for Shawnee, helping get the job done and creating a, a two-point or a two-goal cushion for the Indians. A lot of deliberation after that, Nate, about uh, whether that goal would stand and some, some talking back and forth, but indeed it is. Shawnee likes where they're at right now. Yeah, I think just because of the rarity of a, of a header off of a throw-in for a goal, not something that you see very often. I think threw even the officials off a little bit that time. Like, thought that maybe there might have been an offsides call. But can it be offsides on a header? So the goal stands. Austin Miller with a great play. And we get down to near the halfway point of the second half. There's a stoppage down on the field for the officials to get a player off. And, and it actually looks like Austin Miller, as he was fighting over on that far sideline, went down after a, a hard a slide tackle. He's off the field right now getting looked at. Yeah, he had a little bit of a, a tweak in the Kenton game. We're got a score there, and that was a very physical match as well, just as this one has been in a lot of the WBL Game star, and fortunately he was able to return to that contest. Looks like he's moving around all right. And right now, Nate, it's a one of those cool evenings that you just never know what can tighten up at certain times. You know, and Austin Miller, he's had a tough night. Um, you know, we've seen him in the mix, finally able to get his first goal of the night. But, you know, meanwhile, every time he's touched the ball, he's had two, three, four, even at times five defenders on him that he's had to try to deal with. And, you know, so I'm sure he, he's banged up and definitely feeling this matchup tonight. Head for Sam Tenwaldy. Running out into space for Shawnee. Now just under 19 minutes away from a fourth straight district win. And it's still with some work to do here. And all three of these goals for Shawnee have been unanswered. They began in a one nothing hole. And St. Mary scored 13th minute. Now Dakota Miller. Good looking shot, knocked down. Dakota Miller doing a nice job using his speed. Good footwork to get a good shot off. Looked like that one got deflected. You saw the, or you could hear the crowd calling for a handball, but officials saying no, hit him a little bit higher, maybe off the hip. Either way, Shawnee right now trying to see if they can't keep this possession. And they, like they've done for the vast majority of tonight, controlled possession, controlled the ball on their side of the field, and, and put the pressure on the St. Mary's defense. Outside of right to Luca Facillo. Right at the top of that top line of the box, has it deflected and then booted away. By St. Mary's, they keep it in for the time being. And there goes Easton Kraft with some running room and some help on offense. And Noah Scheid has other thoughts. Deflects it. And the pass goes outside. And 
Picked up on offense for St. Mary's. Reese Triplett keeps the play going. Gets to the inside the 15 before it's bumped underneath by Ethan Parlapiano and a quarter kick for St. Mary's results. Ethan Triplett doing a great job working against the Shawnee defense that time. Had to dribble through two and three de uh, defenders at one time. Looked like he was going to have an opportunity to maybe get a shot off, but Parlapiano at the last minute getting his foot in there to poke that one out. Austin Miller returns for the Indians. A couple of changes as well for the Riders. And they're gonna send Braden Keller down. I'm gonna take this kick inside the flag. Bends it down up front and uh, too tall for the whole Rider roster. I believe that's the first corner kick for the Rough Riders tonight. You know, a little bit too strong on that kick. It's going to go back to Shawnee. The Indians will get Tate Bender back out on the change. Seven kicks, seven shots to one apiece there. Shawnee with the heavy end of the scale right now. Hit all three categories. Scores, shots on goal and corner kicks. Nice play by the sophomore, Coda Miller, right there to get into that ball, keep it on the inside of his foot to make sure it doesn't go out of bounds. St. Mary's able to get the possession back regardless, though. Brady Triplets and Barla Piano. See two riders hit the turf and gonna be throw in for Shawnee. Coda Miller tries to feed that ahead for Austin Miller. Cleared away there, Braden Jeffries. And thrown back in, oh, over the top, there's Coda Miller. Tries to cross it up, and Luca Facillo couldn't find it in the chaos there. Tough ball through a couple of defenders. Coda Miller with a nice job on the left foot that time. Was sending it in, was hoping either had the angle and maybe hit that corner and go in or one of his teammates come flying through the middle. Lucky break by the Rough Riders as the Indians offense hadn't quite got down to, the, down to that end of the field yet. Not get a bounce by Shawnee, got to give a throw in to St. Mary's. And a foul on Shawnee. A strong kick up field. Jack Tenwaldy snags the ball, hits the, goes right on down with a crashing Keller coming in for, actually that's uh, Vincent Holtzapple. Came crashing in for St. Mary's on offense. Uh, they're still bringing it. Cody Burt up into the middle and gets a ricochet back at him. Triplet balls this one down. Left of the box, keeps it within play. And Shawnee gets rid of it up that far sideline. Changes for St. Mary's. We get underneath 14 minutes to play. Three straight Shawnee scores. St. Mary's scored in the 13th minute. Up on winding down, Shawnee evened up the game with just under 12 to go before half. And two scores within about five minutes of each other in the middle portion of the second half. Here, Luca Facillo trying to curl that one around, but he's going to get a corner kick out of his efforts. Good effort by Luca Miller. Coda, or Luca Facillo, excuse me, as Coda Miller had started that off on that left side, got it in to Tate Bender, fed it into Luca. Not able to quite beat his defender, but able to get it off a Rough Rider defender. So another corner kick opportunity for the Indians. Try to see if they can't cash in one more time. Luca puts the ball on the ground, lines it up. And a heads on in and pretty much through there for Shawnee. Sam Tenwaldi wants to hold on to the possession or it's cleared away by the Rough Riders. 
Mateo feeds to Lucia. And he's hit by A.J. Deeringer. Another corner kick. Hit a St. Mary's player before going down below the goal line. So Luca going to hurry this time. Just a short kick to Noah Scheid as he's going to feed it in now. Tried to loft it up there to Austin Miller as he was able to get up but just missed that header. Take advantage of that size. So we hit the 12-minute mark. And we got a card coming out against St. Mary's. So it's going to be a yellow card against number seven. And it's Vincent Holtzapple for St. Mary's. First card of the night for either side. Well, he'll have to come off. And Last time these two teams met, it was we, we mentioned the physical play that usually comes with these, these two in this matchup. Earlier this year when these two met back in September, St. Mary's six yellow cards, a much better job playing discipline tonight. You know, and as they've just gotten their first one. And we have just under 12 minutes left to play in the game. Yeah, the defensive intensity has been there all night and they've done it cleanly. Held Shawnee off the board for the first about 28 minutes plus. Did the same for the first 14 minutes plus in the in the second half. This game was tied for quite a while. Tate Bender, a nice job that time getting his foot on the ball to keep it on the offensive side. Down into that left corner. Sam Tenwaldi lines this one up. Headed ahead for Miller. And on through for his second goal of the game. This is what Shawnee wanted to do. They wanted to send cross after cross Shawnee after cross. And trying to see if they couldn't get something going. And Austin Miller with his second goal of the night. As Sam Tenwaldi with the beautiful cross. Austin Miller there to head it in. And the Indians now with a three-goal lead. 4-1. Shawnee's Miller. Second goal, 36 now of the year for the WPL Player of the Year in 2022. Shawnee with Hunter Drury on the pitch. You see Carson Frost has made its way out there as well. You know, one thing to note though, Nate coming in, you know, we had Luca Facillo gets down and crosses this one up and goes down. One one thing to note is, uh, you know, we had Austin Miller be, you know, he went off shaken up a little bit earlier. And, uh, and Matteo Facillo was kind of a toss up if, whether he was gonna play tonight as well. But now you're, you have that three goal advantage. You can kind of give those two a little bit of a breather here at the end of the contest. Up by three, you got them in case you need them, but thinking about later on in the year, not damaging anything that they're fighting any further. Yeah, and earlier this week too, um, Colin Scheib, um, his status was a little uncertain, battling injuries as well. So the Indians team a little banged up. All three of those guys though, Austin Miller, Mateo and Colin, all able to um, be able to play tonight, all played significant minutes as usual. And even though it took a little bit of going, eventually the pressure from the Shawnee offense was able to finally get some things going. And you know, Austin Miller, affectionately known by some of his coaching staff as the human cheat code, you know, and you can see why with that size and what he can do, you know, being defended by two, three, four, five guys at different times, having to constantly get through tough defense, getting banged around down there, trying to get him pushed off the ball, but he just keeps going, keeps going. Finally, he's able to get a little bit of space. And if you give him a little bit of room, he makes you pay as we saw on both those goals. Well, the look at both of those scores too, they were both headers, headers on in. Well, and that's what makes him difficult to defend. You know, you, you can't teach height. Look at this ball. But as you were saying. You, you can't teach height and that, you know, obviously that is a huge advantage from Austin Miller. He's a, is an incredibly athletic player. Um, you know, gonna go to college and play soccer, but also a talented basketball player, just overall great athlete as the Shawnee offense continues to put pressure on. 
you know, with, with that size advantage, there's not a lot of teams that are going to be able to put somebody down that can um, jump with him or, or go one on one with him. As we saw St. Mary's tonight, you know, obviously they just felt like if they could put enough pressure on him, they could keep him down. But, you know, you, you were able to send the ball into the box that many times. You're able to put that many crosses. Eventually, it's going to find its mark. And it did as Austin Miller finally was able to put two headers in tonight. He even had a post earlier in the first half on a semi-open look. But we stand here four to one. That one's headed out defensively by Caleb Miller right in front of the keeper, Jack Tenwalty. Cody Burt fighting for the ball. A.J. Derringer turns it upfield for St. Mary's and couldn't quite keep it inside the white. Uh, but it is going to be rewarded, Ayush. St. Mary's toss in. Aiden Jeffrey sends it on in. He receives the pass back. There is Wyatt Chapman trying to find position. Gets it back. Defended well. Burt will play it back for Jack Hurtenstein. And then lifted out of there by Shawnee. Long run for the, the keeper, Caden Balwig. Sends it pretty much out of out of play near the Shawnee bench. Get down below eight minutes to go in the contest. Still obviously a lot of soccer left to play. 7.45 left to go here in the second half. But Shawnee with a nice, comfortable three-goal lead. And, you know, looks like they're going to be on their way to a fourth straight district title. You know, and you, when you hear that, you think, you know, there's obviously a lot of success for these seniors. You know, we talked about all the accomplishments that they have had. And, you know, sometimes when you see that run come, a lot of schools are like, all right, you know, we've seen this group come up. You know, we saw them when they were little through club. Now they're into high school. You know, the success has continued. And then you think, okay, there's, you know, you're probably going to see a little bit of a drop off. This Shawnee team is going to graduate eight seniors. They have accomplished a tremendous amount. They have been probably the most successful group that has come through Shawnee soccer, which is really saying something because of the success that this program has had. But they have so much talent um, with the younger kids. That JV team is riddled with them. You're looking at this varsity team right now with a bunch of sophomores, um, a, you know, a bunch of juniors. You're losing Austin Miller. You're losing Sam Tenwalde. You're losing your goalkeeper, Jack Tenwalde. But when you look at what's coming behind them, you're still as excited and think that this success can be sustained when you have players like Luca Facillo, when you have you know Tate Bender, um, the JV uh, goalkeeper and Drew Niedemeyer, another tremendous goalkeeper that's going to come up. And when you can just replace what you are losing and you feel like the drop off is is almost none, you know that's got to be a great feeling for a program. Yeah, not a whole lot of. Programs around Northwest Ohio and really the entire state can graduate two, not one, but two league player of the years, players of the year, and come away and feel okay going into next year. Well, that's the case with Austin Miller, this year's WBL top player in the in the league, and last year Mateo Facillo, and then again last year, you know, graduated the the all-time leading scorer in program history with Jake Miller, moving on for Shawnee. And here they are, and they've accomplished again a, a tremendous deal and a lot more to go. A state run a couple of years ago in 2020 finally got over the hump there with uh, trying to get through Lexington, and that could be another team they see here in the next round. It'll be either Ontario or Lexington to meet these teams one of the, uh, for Shawnee as long as they hold on for the last five and a half minutes. In the regional semifinal, not even a regional championship this year. They put those regions together to meet immediately and get it over with, didn't they? Well, and I'll tell you, another big change, you know, the last couple of years, the Shawnee team has had to travel to Lexington for the regional where they have met Lexington. You know, you, you know, it hasn't wasn't designed that way, obviously, but Lexington got the job done and they were able to play mm -hmm. a regional game on their home field. Well, now that, you know, they moved districts around, or re regionals around, excuse me, and now... Shawnee gets to play a regional game in their backyard. And then after that, if they were happen to get through there, the regional final up in Bowling Green. So they get to stay a lot closer to home than what they're used to as well as they move on to the next round. Yeah, it's going to feel a lot better. This is a program that travels well, so it be a lot easier when you don't have to do that just quite as far as that Lexington drive is a haul. And some of it has to be with a lot of the the, a lot of the programs here 
locally being in the thick of things, and you have to keep those locations in mind once you get to that round. Four-minute mark here upon us. Is, it is 4-1 Shawnee. Game that St. Mary's led 1-0 back in the first half. But four unanswered as Luca Facillo gets an open look. Just one man to beat. Goes left and puts it in through the right. And Luca Facillo. And it just seems right. Luca Facillo, we've seen him do a lot of work tonight. He's had to fight through a lot of traffic. And hasn't quite had or been able to, to finish, but he's worked very hard tonight. Won a lot of 50-50 balls. And here towards the end, able to put another one in the net as Shawnee has opened this one up. Fourth goal of the half for Shawnee. Comes with three minutes and 58 seconds left on the clock. And they can feel it right now. You can take a look back through the last couple of years for Shawnee. Right now, this would be their 17th win. 17-1-1, one one, a fourth straight district, four straight WBL titles already locked up. 19-2 a year ago. Got through into the regional final game before losing their second match of the year. Regional champs in 2020. Uh, lost in the final four, 2019. 19 and two. District champs is that one almost snuck its way in. 10 Waldy came out, cleared it out. And in 2019, a regional final to guess who? Lexington, and that was the, the loss there. 2018 was the last time Shawnee got to this game and did not advance. That was a loss to Kenton, just their third defeat of the entire year. But for St. Mary's, look back at their years. This one will come to an end at 16-4-1. Back-to-back district championship game appearances, though. That has got to be a good feeling to consistently get back here. Not just one year, but to get back a second year in a row. There is a hefty group of seniors uh, in there for St. Mary's, but uh, for head coach Josh Hurtenstein, this is going to feel good to be back right at the cusp of, of the breakthrough for St. Mary's with the year that they've had. Really, really good strike there, held on by Tenwaldi. And they got to this game and had an early lead, Nate, and that's certainly going to be a, not only a confidence builder, but part of a, a program builder going forward. Yeah, you know, and obviously coming away, obviously they obviously wanted a different result. And, you know, I'm sure they're not going to want to hear a bunch of, about moral victories, you know, after losing a second year in a row in the district final. But this is a very talented program with a lot of very talented kids. They've accomplished a lot. You know, sometimes it's just about timing. And unfortunately, this program has had to go up against an extremely successful, very good Shawnee team. But that doesn't take away from anything that they have done or been able to accomplish uh, as it comes to the Rough Riders. You know, we're talking about the talent that's on Shawnee. You know, Sam, Sam Tenwaldy is going to continue. He's going to go over to England and play um, for the University of Chester overseas. His brother, the goalkeeper, is uh, committed to New Mexico State to play um, goalie there. Austin Miller is going to go and play college at the, or play soccer at the next level as well. So this is a very talented team. And, you know, when you come up against, you know, a buzzsaw like that, you know, sometimes it, it just it just happens. It, it is what it is. But, you know, this Rough Rider team, a, a lot of talent, you know, played hard, kept this game really close. This defense played tremendous. A 5-1 game doesn't really tell the story when it's all said and done because this defense stepped up for a, a vast majority of this game and kept feeling pressure and pressure and pressure and, and stood tall. But in the end, it was just a little bit too much for them. And, you know, as we come down to the end, some of the reserves are in. You know, obviously we've seen this score kind of expand a little bit, but that doesn't take anything away from St. Mary's. Yeah, at the 20, almost at the 20-minute mark, it was still a two-to-one two, two to one game at the time. 25, or 2025 is when that Miller, first Miller header went on in. Added another about eight, eight and a half minutes later. And then Facillo with four to go. That whole scoring run down, 27-51. It was Braden Triplett for St. Mary's, the only one of the, day, of the day for the Riders. Then for Shawnee, with 11.58 left in that first half, um, it was Caleb Miller off a free kick. Got one through the pipes. We were tied 1-1 going into half. Alex McGuire found a score with 25-17. Left in the second half, 3-1. 10, 9, with 20-25 and 11-29, a 
couple of Miller five, headers on through four, and then the Vasillo finisher at the end. Two, it gives us one, a five to one zero. and Shawnee can now officially celebrate their fourth consecutive final, district Shawnee championship with a win five, over St. Mary's today at Elida. A great win by the Indians tonight. They get a chance to move on to November 2nd at Lima Stadium for a regional semi against a familiar foe in either Lexington or Ontario. It's going to be a tremendous regional semifinal either way. And looking forward to see if this Indian team can continue this march. It's, I think you know the whole team feels like there's some unfinished business that they still have to, you know, the seniors, we talked about the accolades, everything that they have gotten. But what has eluded them is you know that state birth, state championship, and you know, you gotta feel like that's something that they want to go out with. Absolutely. A lot of those players were part of that, or some a handful, I should say, part of that 2020 run, but looking to get there and enjoy it once again. A couple of rungs to go before heading on out to potentially play for a state state final four berth and even more. Nate, anything final to close on? No, just a great night of soccer. It was, uh, you know, a rivalry that, you know, we saw come to an end this season as Shawnee continues that dominant run over WBL teams as we've seen them do over the last four years. And it took a little bit tonight, but they were able to put a stamp on it as they, uh, you know, punch their ticket to another regional final. I congratulate St. Mary's and Coach Hurtenstein for a tremendous year. They come up short here today in the district title game for the Riders, and their season comes to a close. And the best of luck going forward to Ryan Quatman and the whole crew with the Shawnee Indians as they win and advance here tonight. From Nate Carlock and Jacob O'Neill on our cameras outside, I'm Garrett Mansfield saying goodnight from Elida on WOSN.